here is one picture that if you were at Met Breuer for Unfinished, Thoughts Left Visible, you'll find familiar. This was the work that represented Carrie in that exhibition. It comes to us from Yale University Art Gallery. And we're so grateful to them for having made it basically um, almost a year-long loan to us. And from here in New York, she will then join the tour of the retrospective as it moves on to Los Angeles. But here you have a wonderf uh, the wonderful presence of this kind of empowered artist, this woman who is caught in the midst of painting her own self-portrait that lies behind her. And the self-portrait is a paint-by-numbers self-portrait. And I remember as a child my own first paint-by-numbers kit. And you know, blue is number 50, or red is number six. And, and lo and behold, very quickly you realize you're a painter too. And I, think, and I think that that is part of the power of this picture, that we picture ourselves maybe being painters. And there's no mistake, of course, that she's a painter. She has this immense, wonderfully oversized palette um, with this amazing, um, amazing array of, of bravura, impasto, acrylic, brush strokes. And so a little mini abstraction within a larger figurative composition. So I think it speaks in a way, too, to Carrie's um, interest in abstract painting. Um, and we remember something that he had left behind all the way back in 1980, but it has appeared more, with more and more frequency in the work um, in recent years. And Carrie very deliberately also moved to figuration back in 1980 in order to represent the themes and the subjects that he felt were so necessary to show on the museum walls. And he didn't buy the idea that some of his cohorts, um, other artists of color did, that by being an abstract painter, one escapes, in a way, the trap of race, because anyone could be an abstract painter, and it doesn't, one is not tied to, to, to um, certain subjects. I don't know that Kerry agrees with that, although he is, he's written about it very trenchantly and somewhat um, controversially, in, in a fact. But I think we see him more and more in recent years trying to find a way to make a certain kind of abstraction speak in the same way that his figurative paintings do. So a painting, too, about what we imagine an artist might look like. And I often ask, especially my younger tours, who they think of when they think of an artist. If I've asked them to name an artist, do they say Rembrandt? Do they say Van Gogh? Do they say Jackson Pollock? Do they say Willem de Kooning? Well, those are all white men, of course. And what if the artist were black? What if the artist were a woman? What if the artist were a woman of color? And I think the idea that one can find oneself in these paintings um, is also a really important one, especially when one doesn't see oneself on museum walls all that much. Um, my second favorite painting, if de style, that we began with is my first favorite. My second one and it, and it sort of has to be, because it's the work I uh, acquired for the museum's collection last year, um, is this one from 2014 called Untitled Studio. Um, it was painted for Carrie's show at, first show in London at David Zwerner Gallery. And when um, I met my co-curators in Chicago for one of our visits to Carrie um, a month before that show, in September of 2014, this picture was in the studio and almost finished. And I. The minute I saw it, I knew right away that this was a picture for the Met. Um, perhaps because within it are cataloged all of the, all of the many wonderful things um, one finds in painting, whether it's a, or genres of painting, whether it's portraiture or still life or a vanitas with that skull at the center of the work table reminding us of death's ever presence, or trompe l'oeil with that little red thumbtack holding up those um, bits of fabric and paper at the corner, or even the male nude in the back there, or landscape through the window, or even abstraction with those wonderful um, splashes on the, on the studio work table surface. So a picture that catalogs all of the wonderful possibilities in painting, but I think it also reminded me of, a, of something I'd read about, um, Carrie describing an experience he'd had in the summer after his seventh grade year, when he had won a scholarship to attend Otis 
um, for the first time and take his first drawing class. And because it was the summertime and a lot of the faculty was away, it gave the instructor the opportunity to show the class one of their studios. And the studio they went into was the studio of Charles White, the great WPA era muralist and great draftsman and printmaker. And it was already someone who Carey had idolized as a child. He'd done a book report on White in the third grade using the children's encyclopedia, Great Negroes Past and Present. And so this was a figure with whom he was already familiar, but in a kind of funny way, Carrie jokes that as a, as a youngster, he thought that if you were famous enough to be in a kind of book like that, that you had to be dead. But little did he know that Charles White was alive and well and living in LA and working at the very school he was attending that summer. And so I think that experience, both of seeing an artist's studio for the first time, but also realizing that this was the studio of the man who you revered, and seeing in that studio all of the wonderful tools of the trade, the paints, the paint brushes, the unfinished, partially finished canvases, that that very moment is when Kerry realized that he too could, could someday inhabit a space like that, that he too could be an artist, and that, um, and that there was endless possibility in that. And so a painting that I too hope, in a way, speaks to people and shows them all of those possibilities.